blessings everyone and we have another truth tuesday amen and um and this truth tuesday um i have been having this dream sometimes it'd be dreams and sometimes it'd be visions of um preachers preachers people up preaching and just being struck either with illness or with death okay and i've been praying to god said lord what where is this um uh, what, what are you showing me? You know, first of all, Lord, is this from you? And then second of all, Lord, what are you showing me? What am I seeing, right? And so, um, these dreams kept going on and on for uh, a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks. And um, I was like, Lord, you know why? And I mean, these are well-known preachers, pastors, leaders, what have you, up in the pulpit and just dying, or not, or or sometimes not dying, but being struck with illness, you know, and and, uh, and being incapacitated, and so you know these these visions they kept scaring me, and I was like, Lord, you know, what are what am I seeing? You know, if y'all know me, I'm the type of prophet God shows me uh, things that are happening in the body of Christ, and um, and and basically. Uh, he'll show me spirits that are going on in the body of Christ, things that need to be corrected, right? And so I was like, Lord, I said, Lord, you know, I wish you would give me a good prosperity message or something, you know. I, I wish I had that type of anointing or that type of grace, but I don't, you know. God has graced me with this type of grace, you know, uh, a, a corrective grace, uh, what have you. And so I said, Lord, what are you showing me? What is this? What is this? You know, I one thing about it, I have a heart for God's people. I have a love for God's people. I don't want nobody to be lost, including myself, right? First, I asked God, Lord, are you showing me? No. And he said, I want, to, I want you to release this to my people so that my people can get it right. Um, his grace is running out on some of you. His grace is running out on some of you. And what he is showing me is that some of these preachers that have been struck down as they were preaching his word have a heart of pride. They have been cursed because of their heart of pride. Because one thing about it, when the spirit of pride enters in, it doesn't enter in by itself. It enters in pride and also enters in the spirit of destruction because pride will destroy you. Being prideful will destroy you in the way it destroys you because it gives you a self-deception and you are self-deluded thinking that you are the one and you get to try to get the glory from God instead of giving the glory to him. Now it's all about you. You don't want to listen to nobody. You don't want to see what is in front of you. You don't want to change. And so the grace of God on your life is running out. His grace for you to repent is running out. And it's a scary thing to see someone ruled by pride start dying. Now, some that I've seen that are like this, they're dying spiritually. But God said they are going to die naturally because his grace has run out for these people and for these pastors and these preachers and these leaders and just these people in general. You are preaching the word of God, but you are far from him. You are preaching the word of God. You are prophesying in his name, but your heart is far from him because of your prideful ways and your and your you're so prideful that you not only take the glory from him to yourself, but you also have hidden iniquities in your heart, which are sins that you have and people have told you to get right, but it's it's not me. They ain't talking about me. I'm good. Why? Because God has not shown, God has been showing you his grace all this time. So he has held you in his hands and he has loved on you for you to get it right and giving you a chance 
in an opportunity to get things right with him. And so you think because you have not been touched or nothing bad has not happened to you or you have not been exposed, then what you're doing is okay. When you're living in secret sin that is now going to be exposed in front of everyone and that God is going to judge you. It's a scary thing. And, 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 and Holy Spirit has convicted you over and over and over. Every preached message has, has told you to get it right over and over and over. To repent, repent, repent. The time is at hand to repent. And you have not. Why? Because pride has told you not to. Because pride has said, I'm okay. Pride won't, hum, won't allow you to humble yourself, but you want everybody else to humble themselves under your authority, but you have not humbled yourself. And judgment is coming for you. Again, I don't know who I'm talking to. God showed me just leaders and preachers, leaders, leaders just dying. And then pride, even when God is trying to move and he's trying to change things in the churches and the services. And he's trying to move, but your pride won't even let uh, allow the Holy Spirit to move because we've been doing it like this for years and we're not going to change how we're doing things. But this is not your church. This church belongs to God. So that it just because, but because of a prideful mindset and a prideful spirit. You are going to fall. You are going to fall hard. Let me give you a scripture. Acts 12, 19 through 25. This is what God gave me. 12, 19 through 35. And when Herod had sought for him and found him not, he examined the keepers and commanded that they should be put to death. And he went down from Judea to Caesarea and there abode. And Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon, but they came with one accord to him, and having made blasts the king's chamberlain, their friend desired peace because their country was nourished by the king's country. And upon a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of God and not of man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory, and he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. But the word of God grew and multiplied, and Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had full, fulfilled their ministry and took with them John whose surname was Mark. Understand this. You get up Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and your, your colored robe and your, your vestments and you get up preaching the word and, and people and you prophesying to people so much that now you taking the glory from God. Why are you taking the glory from God? Because people are looking at you as God instead of you pointing the glory to God and saying, no, God said. They looking for your prophecy instead of reading their word. They looking for your prophecy instead of praying to God. They looking for your prophecy instead of looking to God themselves. So you're only supposed to be a messenger. You're not supposed to be God. And so you're taking that pride for yourself. Look at Herod. He came up there with all these beautiful robes and, and he gets up there. And even when the people said, oh, this is the voice of God or this is God. He didn't correct them. And so you're looking at these preachers and these leaders when people say that to them and they're not correcting them and pointing the glory back to God. And God will not share his glory with nobody. And so what happened with Herod here was, be it was because of his prideful nature and him wanting to be God. And he says he didn't point the glory back to God. God smote him right there on the spot. And so that's what God was showing me is that he is going to start smiting some of these people, these leaders. I'm not even saying leaders, preachers, whatever. That are taking the glory away from him and putting the glory on himself because of pride. And you've been doing it for so long. You do it so long. You've been doing it for so long that you don't even recognize that you're doing it. And so people have told you that you're doing it and you still do it because 
of pride. Pride has self-deception. Pride has, I can't see what I'm doing wrong and I'm not going to see what I'm doing wrong because I'm not doing wrong. And then, I, you know, of course, we know the other, the other uh, scripture, Proverbs. Proverbs tells us there's a whole, whole chapter in Proverbs tell you about humbling ourselves. Proverbs 16 and 18. Pride goeth before destruction and haughty spirit before the fall. Pride goes before destruction because when you get, when you are prideful, the spirit of destruction enters in as well. <laughs> Look, I done, I done knocked it all down. Pride goes before destruction because it because pride enters in and destruction enters in as well. Why? Because the enemy wants to destroy you. One thing he'll do first is make you rebel against God and get prideful. Now you think you God. Then guess what? You be you are going to be destroyed from the inside out. Herod was destroyed from the inside out. He was smoked there. And then guess what? He got ate up by worms. And so what God was showing me is that this pride is cursing these leaders. Pride is cursing some of his people. And he said the grace, his grace is running out. His grace is running out and his judgment will be upon you. So repent, repent and change. There's nothing wrong with getting lowly and getting humble and humbling yourself and repenting. It's nothing wrong with telling somebody I need help because I messed up. You know how many deliverances I had to go through? I had to go through many deliverances because my, why? Because I have no pride. I have none. If I need help with something, I'm going to somebody that can help and get me delivered and get me set free. You can't minister bound like this. And this is a time that we are, we've been saying this for years and years and years and years, but we are living in the last days. Look around you. You can't even go to the store. You can't go to school. You can't go to Walmart. You can't go to, you can't go to church without somebody coming in and trying to kill you. So we are living in the last days, which means judgment is coming. Jesus is coming. Why not get it right? Why not repent? Why not give your life fully and completely to Christ? Why not pray to God and say, Lord, I need help. I need you. He is here. He is waiting for you. Again. Holy Spirit is not a, it, 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 the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. So God ain't going to make you do something. He can provoke you to do something, but he's not going to make you. Repent. Repent. All it takes is, Lord, forgive me. Lord, I'm sorry. A godly sorry. Lord, change me. Change me. Clean me up from the inside out. It don't have to be an old big. And my thing is even, you know, one thing we do when we repent, we like to repent to God in, in secret. But the people that your behavior hurt, you need to repent to them as well. Go ask these people for forgiveness. People you have destroyed because of your pride or because of your sin or because of your mouth. You put your mouth on people. Understand this. You know, even the Bible said, you know, it says, touch not my anointed, do my prophet no harm. It's not only talking about touching them with your hands, but you have touched some of God's anointed or God's elect with your mouth. Go apologize. Go apologize. Don't just do it in secret. Oh, you know, you dishonored them. You dishonored them in front of everybody. So why not honor them and apologize in front of everybody? Repent. Repent. I'm telling you, the grace is running out. You have bucked up against God. Like you, you have bucked God and you think that your grace ain't going to run out. Look at Herod. King Herod had been bucking up against God and bucking up against Christians for a minute, for a long time. And this King, this particular one. And this was the last draw. The last draw was that prideful because he had been already been prideful and he already he bucked, he bucked up against God's people. And also he thought he was God. And he didn't give God his glory. And that was the last draw right there. 
How many of you are on your last draw? How many of you are on your last draw with God? His grace is sufficient, but his grace is running out. So God bless you. Please, please, please. Like I said, I have a heart for God's people. I don't want to see no one suffer. I don't want to see no one. I don't, all this preaching and all this going through and all this warfare we go through and to, to miss heaven because you prideful and you don't want to repent. You don't let people to Christ. You have prayed for people. You have you have you have preached the house down. You don't preach the paint off the wall. But you miss heaven because of pride. Because you didn't repent for, for, for your pride for ways. You didn't repent because of your iniquity, sin, your secret sin that you think nobody know about, but God know. Please, please, I admonish you. Go into your prayer closet and repent. Go into your prayer closet and pray for other people. I don't want to see nobody lost. So God bless you. God bless you. And God keep you. Hashtag don't shoot the messenger. Amen.